Are y'all following me? That was just a little side note. That was a personal experience, and it's for real. Verse 6, and when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their nets, what, broke. They break. And they beckon unto their partners. Come on, somebody should beckon unto your partner. Hey, you, come on. Which were in the other ship that they should come and help them. Partners are helpers. And the power of partners being helpers is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28, when it specifically talks about there is the ministry of helps. Partners have the ministry of helps. That means when you're tired, Brother David, and you can't run any longer, a partner will show up and say, hey, Sister Sharika, you can do it. You hear me? When you don't want to walk, when you don't want to press, you don't want to pray, your partner says, weren't we supposed to be there? And where were you? And why weren't you there? Your partner holds you to a place of accountability. Many powerful business people are never, never successful because they don't know how to play together, excuse me, partner together with other people. Many good church people, guess what? Good marriages, good relationships. Guess what? They don't know how to be successful because they don't have good partners to hold them accountable. So you got a good thing, but your good thing is going awry because only you are the ones trying to hold it together. I don't ever want to be that guy that has to hold everything together. If I've got to be the person holding this church together every single week, I'm going to tell you something. It's done. It's failed. It's gone. It's out of here because I can't do it. But there is a measure or a part that I play that I must hold on to, and therefore it adds to being the deal breaker. Say, my part matters in this partnership. My part matters. My part. Write that down for me. My part matters. Write it down as a quote. My part matters as in this partnership. And they came and filled both of the ships so that they began to sink. If I really had thought about this, I would have just put a whole lot of rock up here, just a lot of rock, and, and see if one of you men or women could come up here and pick all of the rock up and walk away. Because what you're seeing is, is that this thing is so much and it's so heavy, it's going to take some partnership to get all of what's in the ocean out of it or in the sea out of it. Do you know that according to Revelation that the word S-E-A-C represents the word nation? So when he says that I shall pull out of the sea, he's saying I shall pull out of the nation. And if he pulls out of the nation, he's pulling specific spe specific. <laughs> specific fish at a specific time for a very specific reason right. Right? right some people love bass you don't fish for bass like you do catfish right. you hear me right. bass are fish that love stuff moving catfish love stuff yeah. dead and still <laughs> but they show taste good ain't that right uh -huh, uh -huh. They, they, right they need to be caught and put on the plate Verse 8, and when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Oh my God. For he was astonished at all uh, that was with him and, the, and the, the drought of fish which they had taken. Verse 10, and so was all of James, John, the son of Zebedee, which were partners of Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. It's always relevant to Jesus Christ that he will always take very natural things and then bring it into a very spiritual principle. He takes something like fish and fishermen. If you're an accountant, he'll take something like money and more money to get your attention. If you're a mother, he'll talk about your children because you love them so much and you'll do anything to see them succeed. So he'll talk about children. Are y'all hearing me? If you're somebody who operates in healing, he'll talk about healing because that piques your interest. There's nothing in the Bible that Jesus Christ in his three and a half years of ministry did not talk about. Did not teach. Why? Because he was trying to grab every single person that he could when he went into a place and he had done his research. Are y'all hearing me? Are y'all hearing me? So you got to know your market. And if you know your market, then you have to present to that market amongst the information. Brother Shane, what do you do for a living? Manager of an auto parts store. I'm not going to go in Brother Shane's place and try to buy a skirt for my wife. I'm sorry. I did that for you because I'm trying to get to my point. I'm not going to go in Brother Shane's place and try to buy a briefcase. Do you have any briefcases in the auto parts store? Not at all. Do you have any airplane parts in your briefcase? In, I mean, yeah, in the briefcase. Any, any airplane parts in your auto parts store? So why would I go to the auto parts store to buy airplane parts when he don't even sell them? Ain't that right? 
So Jesus always speaks to the people where they are so he can take them from where they are to where he's trying to get them to.